Welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today's video lesson will be a follow-up to the first two lessons on pivot tables and we'll go through some more advanced options that I think you'll find very exciting. Make sure you download the file referenced in the lesson for round two because it's not in the master workbook and you'll see that I have basically the pivot table that we ended with for the round one lesson. I will bring the employee right above row labels so that we can start out with employees and sales underneath. Last time I showed you how you could change a little bit of the subtotaling through the value field settings and I also showed you how you can minimize some of these. One additional f feature in terms of expanding and collapsing these row labels is to right click the level of detail that you want. So let's say the employee name. If you go to expand and collapse you'll see hitting the plus or minus sign would be these first two options but you can do expand entire field or collapse entire field. So we'll hit collapse entire field and you'll see that all of them collapsed. This can be very useful if you have lots of data and going through and clicking them all would be much more of a waste of your time. It is especially helpful when you have multiple levels beyond just two. So first I will go ahead and expand them all to get back to where we were. And then instead of having the region in the filter area, I'm going to bring that above employee so that you can see that it now has Midwest and then employee with each of their sales related to the Midwest, New England, the employees with the breakdown there, and West Coast. And so you'll see if I right click and collapse the entire field for the employee, I have to scroll up because it all went away, but you'll see that it collapsed that as well. Another great feature that's available through right click is filtering. So let's say we wanted to filter out New England from the list. We can right click New England, go to filter, and then you'll see it says keep only selected items or hide selected items. So I'll click hide and you'll see that it automatically changes the row label filter to remove New England. If I clear the filter, I could have done keep only selected items and it would filter to New England. And that can be helpful if you want to click multiple items a little bit more easily than the drop down list, especially if there are a lot of different names or values, and so the list is very long. It can be good to go through and highlight them visually, and then you can click Keep Only Selected Items. When we have multiple layers, you'll see in Row Labels, there's this Select Field option. This will be a drop down of whatever you have for information. So in this case, when we just filtered on employee, you can see that it automatically chose those selections for us. And like I said, if this list was very long, it would take much longer to do that. So we will clear it. And you can have multiple filters going on multiple layers as well. One great feature of actually using this drop down menu is that you can use the search box to filter similarly to how we just did it. So let's say I click off of Select All, I'll pick Adams, Dwyer, and Smith, hit OK. Then I will open it up, and I'll search for Morgan. If I didn't change this checkbox, it would only filter to the search results. But if I click this Add Current Selection to Filter, and hit OK, you'll see that Morgan's sales pop in. So if you already had a filtered list, and you wanted to modify it, but it was very lengthy, you could search within the label and add that selection to it. You could also do that with just a portion of your search term. So let's say we wanted to do anyone with A in their name. We'll see anyone with an A comes up. I'll click Add Selection to Filter. Hit OK. And now all of them show up. Now I will clear the filter here. Column labels have a similar ability to be filtered. And if you add to that list the report filter on the right, it really becomes a powerful way to filter and display information. So let's say instead of item being underneath employee, I'll bring it up to the report filter. You'll see all of the employees lost the plus sign next to them since they don't have item detail under them anymore. And that way we could filter, let's say, to Midwest region. January and February sales and let's do multiple items and keep binder and pencil and hit OK. 
now you're filtering on three separate filters so that you're only showing two months out of the year the Midwest region and all the data in the table is only two items the binder and pencil so using multiple filters really allows for you to create much more powerful reports if you go to your pivot table tools under options you'll see there's actions and you can click clear and I'll click clear filters and you'll see all three of them were cleared so you don't have to wonder which ones you have going you'll notice that when I earlier removed item from the list you could see the update happen to the pivot table as I did it if instead you want to make multiple changes and not have it be visible immediately which is especially useful if you're using a database or a large data set and calculated columns which may take a while to refresh especially when you are moving around a lot of fields so if we decided to change this report to show items by region instead of employee so we'd be removing it from the filter moving it down to row labels moving employee up or unchecking the box all that would happen live down here there's a defer layout update option and if you click that anything that we do here will not be reflected in the pivot table until we click this update button so I will take item and remove it from filter and bring it down to region underneath region for employee you could either grab it and drag it up or you can just uncheck the box so now we've made two changes and you'll see on the left our pivot table is still the same once I click update it removes the items from the filter and puts it under region and also removes employee this can be especially useful if you have other equations that aren't in the pivot table which may get overlapped if you change the fields as you go for example if I had this filter to January and February I hit OK and let's say I wanted to use the sum of January and February which I already have but let's say I put a formula here to add the two and you'll notice this get pivot data formula is automatically inserted that's because by default Excel refers to the pivot table data as a formula so that when this refreshes it will refer to the correct cell because if you just wrote C7 plus D7 and the pivot table changed what's in C7 and D7 might not be the same and your cell references would not change unless you use a get pivot data and I'll show you how to turn that off later if you don't like it so you'll see that I have this 513 here if I modify the filter now and add in March it will give me a warning saying do you want to replace the contents of the destination cells meaning that the pivot table is going to extend but since pivot tables don't work the same way as cells it doesn't just push my sum to the right it actually covers it up so it's asking me to make sure I want to replace the contents so I'll hit OK and you'll see my formula is no longer there so if you're changing fields that modify the size of the pivot table if you were doing it live it's good to defer the layout update now I will clear the filter I will quickly show you how to disable that get pivot data feature if you go to file options and in the formulas tab you'll see here it says use get pivot data functions for pivot table references and you can uncheck that hit OK and you'll see that when I refer to C7 plus D7 it's much more simplified if you're not intending on the pivot table to change all that much using the get pivot data function can be great if you're using variables but since it sets it up automatically using just the words it really isn't that useful if you want to copy that formula around so if I copy this down it will change the reference that I do it if I enable the get pivot data hit OK and I do the same thing again you'll see that when I drag it down it doesn't change so it can be a little frustrating depending on how you're using the pivot tables and lastly I will show you if you go to the options tab 
first of all, if you don't want to see this pivot table field list, you can click this field list to show it or not show it. Sometimes, depending on how large your screen is, you might want to hide that while you're looking at the data if you're not changing how, what the fields are. And lastly, I'll quickly show you how you can change this field list if you click this top right area where it says Field Selection and Areas Section Stacked. That's the current selection, but I could also do Field Section Side by Side, Field Section Only, Areas Section Only, and Areas Section like this. So if you want to be only using certain parts of the pivot table field list or you like a certain view, you can change it from default. I think that's it for today's lesson, but I will certainly do another follow-up pivot table lesson because I think it's an incredibly powerful part of Excel, which, if you can master, really helps you manipulate source data quickly and easily. Thanks.